What's up, guys? My name is Eli Fishman. We are back with another interview. Today, I'm very glad to be joined by Nick Solak, Texas Rangers outfielder and second baseman, one of the best young players in the game right now. Nick, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Eli. First of all, the 2020 question, you know, how are you doing and how's everything going with you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Um, you know, dealing with everything the best that I can. And uh, it, it's been a little different this year, but, you know, it's, it's, it's great to, you know, have baseball and, and to be able to go out there and play. How would you describe, you know, the atmosphere and the feel of the 2020 season so far and just what's it been like? Yeah, um, I, you know, I think the biggest difference is, of course, you know, without fans, um, which, you know, the, the, they've tried to repli replicate with the fan noise. Uh, some places play it like a little louder than others. Uh, at home, we play it pretty loud, I think, which, uh, you know, really it gives the, the effect that there are fans. You know, it, it's, it's a little weird looking out there and nobody being there, but it sounds like a, a normal baseball game. They even – you know, the Rangers even have like some chants and stuff that like pre-recorded for like uh, Sin Su Chu and Joey Gallo. So, you know, it's uh, it's different, but, you know, like I said, it, it's still still the great game of baseball. Off the field, how is the life? You know, are you guys almost com completely locked down? Are you would you describe it as a total quarantine? Um, pretty locked down. You know, like I don't at home, I don't really leave my apartment um, other than to go to the field and, you know, on the road, it's, you know, pretty much confined to the hotel and, um, and then going to the field. So, you know, I think, you know, everybody's just trying to do their best um, to, you know, minimize, uh, you know, the chances of getting, getting sick so, and, and bringing it to the clubhouse. So, you know, guys are, you know, pretty much home, into the ballpark and then back home. What's the biggest off the field adaptation that you've had to make this season? Cause you know, I've seen like you have to go to the ballpark at random times to get tested and then the food, you have to go pick it up and it just feels like a weird environment. So what's been the biggest surprise adaption you've had to make? Yeah. Um, just the schedule in general is a little bit different. Um, you know, we're not allowed to get to the park more than five hours before first pitch. Um, and usually like on the road, that's, that's probably like a normal time to get there at home. You know, guys usually like to get there a little bit earlier. Um, so, you know, just with the rules this year, you know, it's five hours and it's, you know, not, we can't get there too early. So just getting used to that a little bit. What's the testing been like? Has it been consistent? Have the Rangers have, have they had any problems yet? No, I mean, they, we, it's been consistent. We haven't had any problems. Um, you know, the, they've handled it really well. Um, you know, no hiccups at all, really, from, from the testing standpoint. Um, and, you know, it's pretty much every other day, um, the saliva test. And, you know, we get our results, you know, pretty quickly back. So, uh, you know, they, they, I think the Rangers have done a really good job in, in – uh, you know, uh, you know, getting the tests done, getting the tests sent, and getting the results. I think they've done a really good job. You're having a great season on the field too. Uh, been hitting at the top of the order for the Rangers. You're hitting like 274 last time I checked. What does it mean to see your success on the field as well? And especially in the season where I feel like there's a lot of eyes on the game. You're playing in a beautiful new ballpark, and you know you're you're helping the Rangers a lot. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm just going out there and trying to help the team win games, you know, any way I can. Um, I've played a, a lot of different positions this year um, between, you know, center, left, and, and second. And, um, you know, anytime my name is in the lineup, I'm just – I'm going out there and, and trying to help do something, that, you know, to help the team win. So, um, you know, that that's just what I do every day. And, um, and you know, hopefully – we can, you know, get hot as a team and put together a good winning streak here. Your rookie season last year, 33 games, five homers, 293. What was the biggest key for you in making that smooth transition from AAA to the majors and having that immediate impact to the club? Yeah. Um, yeah, as soon as I got traded, you know, from the Rays over to, to the Rangers, 
Uh, I had went from Durham to Nashville. Uh, you know, I started swinging the bat really, really good. Um, I just got locked in and felt really comfortable at the plate. And, you know, luckily was, you know, able to just continue that in into getting called up and, and against, you know, the, the pitching in the big leagues. And, you know, for me, it was not trying to do too much. And, uh, you know, I, it's, it of course, it, it was exciting and, and big moment, you know, getting called up and, and playing in the big leagues and playing against the best players in the world. But, you know, just kind of reminding myself that, you know, it's still the game of baseball and just to go out there and, and do, do my best and, and play the game that I've always played. Your major league debut or first day in the bigs is a pretty exciting one too. Set in the you you were called up for a doubleheader in the second game, went yard and hit a walk off. So what was that whole um, experience like? You know, do you do you even remember it? Was it like, did you feel like you were walking on air? Yeah, it was uh, it was an awesome experience. Uh, you know, by the end of the second game, I was pretty worn out and tired. Um, just because, you know, I got, I got called up basically the night before from Oklahoma City. Uh, I got taken out of the game that night um, and got on, a, like, the first flight in the morning from Oklahoma City to Dallas, you know, probably around 6, 6 a.m. So I, I woke up at, you know, like 3.30 or 4. I didn't want to miss my flight or anything. I didn't sleep a whole lot after, you know, the night game in Oklahoma City and then, you know, played the first game and then the second game of the doubleheader and, uh, of course, I was at the old ballpark, no air conditioning, it was hot. Um, so, but, you know, I, I was, you know, like I was walking on air, like you said, but it was just like, it was, uh, you know, a, a tiring day, but it was, it was so much fun and I had so much adrenaline, um, you know, to get, you know, to, to make my way through it. And, you know, of course, I, I had all my family there, which was, was really awesome. And, Got the first hit in the first game and the homer and the, the walk-off uh, in the second game. You may not have had it yet, but have you had, you know, the I'm here moment where maybe it's a, facing a specific guy or meeting someone or something that, you know, I'm here, I've made it, I'm in the bigs? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I've had, like, a specific moment. Um, you know, facing some guys last year was pretty cool, you know, just, like, facing – you know, Felix Hernandez, uh, when we played the Mariners, you know, that's a guy that, you know, being a baseball fan and, you know, growing up and watching, you know, one of the best pitchers that, that I watched, uh, you know, uh, facing, you know, Verlander, you know, uh, at the end of the year against the Astros, uh, you know, just, just facing those really good arms that, you know, you watch on TV. Uh, I think, you know, th th that was pretty cool. Um, to be able to go out and, and compete against, you know, some of the, the game's greatest pitchers. Who's the hardest pitcher you've ever faced? Um, Verlander's tough. Uh, James Paxton with the Yankees. We faced him at Yankee Stadium. Um, and he was – he threw the ball really well. He might have no-hit us for like six or seven innings. Um, so those two guys were pretty tough last year. What's your favorite ballpark that you've played in so far in the bigs? Um, you know, the old Globe Life will, you know, that'll always hold a special place in my heart because that's where I debuted. Uh, you know, and I, it's right next to the new one. So I, I drive by it every day on the way to the park, which is pretty cool. Um, and then I'd say you know, my favorite visiting ballpark uh, – this year, I we played at, at Coors Field uh, against the Rockies. I really liked, um, I really liked it there. You know, I, a lot of the time, like I like to uh, like go explore the cities and the places that uh, we go play and like walk around. This year, I can't really do that. I, I've never been to Denver, so I, you know, maybe in the future. But I really liked the ballpark there. How does the ball move there? Because obviously everyone talks about how the ball flies, but I've also heard how it comes out of the hand and then just how a routine fly ball looks a little bit weird. You know, what's your experience with the, how the ball carries? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because, like, the, the fences, like, look – the fences are pretty far back, right? Like, the dimensions of the field are, uh, you know, a little bit further 
because the ball does travel a little bit longer. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think like, you know, I, cause I played center field when we were there and it was like every ball, um, you know, that, that's hit to center, you kind of got to anticipate the, you know, maybe 10 to 15 feet, that's going to go 10 to 15 feet further. Um, and just, you know, really stay behind it just cause as soon as the ball goes up, it, it keeps carrying and, um, you know, through that thin air. Stepping up to the plate, you know, what's your mental approach walking up? What, first of all, what's the walk up song? While it's playing, do you have any routines? You know, what's going through your head? Yeah, uh, the walk-up song this year is The Scots by Travis Scott. Um, I like it. I just like one. that song. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think you – know, I try and do the same thing that I, every time that I walk up to the plate. Um, you know, and usually it, it's really reminding myself to breathe, uh, take deep breaths. Uh, and get a good pitch to hit. I try and simplify it as much as possible. I think a lot of my, more of my thought process comes in, you know, earlier in the day in my preparation, um, watching video, uh, you know, studying a scouting report a little bit, uh, kind of form, forming a plan if I faced a guy before, if I haven't faced a guy before, how I think I can have success that night. Uh, a lot of that preparation and a little more thought um, you know, goes into my at bats earlier in the day. I, I, I really, I, I stick to that. And then as soon as the game starts and I'm walking to the box, it's, you know, just have that in the back of my mind, but really just, you know, go up there and compete. In terms of that preparation, what's the balance of video? Do you do in the cage? Do you have a routine in terms of T? Uh, do you ramp up the machine if you're facing VLO? You know, what do you do? Yeah. Um, you know, as far as, as video, I just, if I faced a guy, I like to watch, you know, what he's tried to do to me, uh, in the past. If I haven't faced him, I'll see, you know, how he like, how he throws, you know, other right-handed hitters, how he throws, um, you know, other right-handed hitters that are like me. Um, and just to, to get an idea, just to see it. Um, and then, you know, I, I have a very, you know, I do the same thing every single day, uh, for the most part. I, you know, when I, you know, get to the field and warm up and then do early hitting in the cage and, you know, take some front toss and some overhand toss. And then later, you know, take BP um, with the team on the field. And then about 45 minutes right before the game every day, I'll hit off the machine and see that velo. Um, and for me, it's just, you know, like a progression. Um, if I want to work on something in the cage more mechanical, I can, I can do that, you know, in my first, first round of hitting, uh, then, it, you know, kind of progress it, get the overhand and on the field and see the ball fly. And then, you know, right before the game, see that velo and, and get it, get it going um, to face that pitcher that night. Every time I hear that routine, it just sounds like so much physical work. I mean, how, how early you are swinging and the exercise and everything. So how do you stay consistent? I mean, usually it's 162 games plus the potential like 40 more, including spring training and playoffs. But even now with 60 double headers and it feels like it's just a very packed schedule. So how do you keep your body consistent? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, sticking to the same routine for me helps, helps that consistency and helps my body. This is, you know, this routine is something that I've done, you know, my whole you know, baseball career, uh, professional baseball career. Um, so my body's used to it. You know, I'm used to the amount of swings I'm taking. I'm used to, you know, the intensity level of the swings that I'm taking. Um, so really, you know, it's a lot of preparation there, but, um, yeah, you know, also to keep, you know, keep my body going, you know, a lot of stretching and, um, you know, warming up and stretching and, um, you know, some other things in the treatment area just to make sure that my body's, um, you know, always feeling good. I feel like we've seen a surplus of injuries this year, especially with pitchers. Um, it feels like countless guys and stars are getting Tommy John right now, um, which obviously doesn't happen, but, you know, there's been a lot. Do you feel like that's because of the quarantine? 
um, so many games, a lack of spring training. There was only like two and a half weeks of summer camp. What do you think that's because of? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not totally sure. I would, I mean, I think that, you know, the different schedule probably, you know, had plays into it as far as preparation, um, you know, like to, to ramp, you know, guys, you know, baseball players like myself are very routine oriented and do the same thing you know, knowing a, a set schedule. So, um, you know, to have, to get it going in spring training, you know, planning to be full go opening day. And then, you know, of course to be, you know, shut down for that period uh, and then re get going and then come out and, and then compete. You know, I think it, it was just different for a lot of guys. Um, and, you know, I, I, like you, like you said, there's, there's a lot of injuries this year, which is unfortunate. Uh, you know, so it's just, I think it's just different uh, on guys' bodies. Going back to this season, what, what would you say has been your biggest takeaway from this season overall? That's a good question. I mean, we're, we're only at the halfway point, you know, I think, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, we've, we've had some hot stretches and, and some cold stretches, and I don't think that we've played the way that we want to play um, collectively as a team to this point. But, you know, I think that, you know, we have a really talented group. And, um, you know, I think you, you've seen a lot of teams this year, like, go on – go be, been really streaky, um, you know, and, and – you know, win a bunch of games in a row. And I think that, that that's exciting. You know, you see seeing around the league that, you know, teams can go on hot streaks and, you know, with, with the limited amount of games and the importance of those games, you know, going on a hot streak means, you know, jumping places in the standings and, and giving yourself a better chance at making the playoffs. So I think, you know, going into this, you know, second half of the season, um, trying to put together wins and uh, get hot and, and go on a, a good winning streak. All right, man. That's it for me. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, and best of luck to you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on.